Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and now PaintballProps.com. This is project number 10 for our multi-electronics learning board. Um, before we start, I want to talk again about our 555 time, timer in monostable mode. This is the block. This is our input trigger pin, which is pin 2 on the 555 timer. Uh, if you haven't seen the tutorial, it's linked below. It's tutorial number 2, uh, 555 timer in monostable mode. Anyhow, this is our adjustable delay potentiometer, our output labeled delay, and our input trigger. Now, if you actually look over here, this is the circuitry for our trigger. We have actually two ways of triggering the 555 timer uh, monostable operation, and that's through a switch, which is on the board labeled S1 delay, D-L-Y, and in. As you can see, I'm just showing you the circuitry here. Now, in, uh, uh, what we have here is a 10K pull-up resistor connected to the trigger, uh, pin, which is pin 2 of the 555 timer. Uh, we've got a button that will act to short that line from 5 volts, because VCC is 5 volts, to ground, and that will trigger the operation of the 555 timer. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but there's also the secondary option of using uh, other devices as opposed to a physical push button to trigger the 555 timer, timer and monostable operation. And that is a transistor switch. This is an NPN transistor, a 2N2222. This is the collector, the base, and the emitter. When power is applied through this 10K ohm protective resistor, uh, power flows from here down through the ground. So it acts as a button. It shorts the 5 volts that we see here to the trigger pin, and that will trigger our monostable operation. Now, what if we left the in line floating? Nothing happens. Power is not sunk through the collector base, uh, collector through the emitter, and so we will see 5 volts in the trigger point. But if we touch this, if we touch that input pin, there's a little tiny signal coming off the human body, and as soon as you touch that line, it causes an instant little spike of, uh, of electricity, of power, to the base, and that actually causes an instant, uh, an, an instant where uh, the base is activated, and then power will travel from the collector through to the emitter and ground, and we will see zero volts here triggering operation of the, of the monostable multivibrator. So the, the key here is literally to add a wire from our input pin on our main pin block on the board, and basically strip away some insulation and touch it. Oh, I rubbed some of that away. <laughs> Uh, and that will actually trigger our 555 timer in monostable mode. So from there, we've got a whole other block diagram, So because we can do a lot of different things with this. So I'm going to erase this, and we're going to work on our block diagram. As you can see, I've added a wire to our input pin, our in pin, on our main pin block, and I've taken half a, a little bit of uh, wire and uninsulated. I've stripped off some of the insulation. Hence, it says touch, you know, touch here. So uh, I touch there, and the output... Uh, pulses a, a pulse delay based on my potentiometer here, the DLY potentiometer. I can make my output uh, pulse this long, you know, one second, I can make it really, really short, I can make it really, really long, etc., etc. So we're going to calibrate that. We're going to connect our DLY output to our LED pin. The LED pin is connected to a, four, a 390 ohm resistor, which cur limits current to our LED, our 3 millimeter red LED. So after we make that connection, we touch here. The LED will turn on for however long we've calibrated our pulse width to be. Now you'll see this in a minute. Now if you've been following along uh, with these videos, this is project number 10, we're halfway through, you'll know that we have some options now. We can set up our 7 segment display to count. We can use our 74LS93 decade counter to, uh, in, you know, to, uh, to interface with our 74LS47 uh, binary to uh, seven segment display decoder and the common anode seven segment display. If you've been following along, you, do, you can do that without my instruction. You can do what we're going to do without my instruction too, because what we're going to do is we are going to use the out A underscore toggle, the toggle output of the 74LS93. Uh, and so we're going to use a touch sensor to toggle on and toggle off. And after that, who knows what we'll do. We'll, get, we'll, we'll see what we do when we get there. Because once we toggle this, we can toggle this output. We can toggle our relay. We can toggle a motor. We can, uh, we can turn on a buzzer. Turn off a buzzer. So on buzzer. Off buzzer. On relay. Off relay. So let's leave this... To, uh, let's leave this and play with it later. We'll, we'll connect a relay and we will connect a buzzer. We'll control a lamp with it. That's what we'll do. Anyhow, so once we've calibrated our our uh, our LED, once we calibrated our 74 our, our 555 timer, and we 
we're happy with our pulse width that is indicated by the LED. We'll connect the DLY output to sorry the, the CLK clock input of the 74LS93. Now, if you'll remember, our AND1 and AND2 pins, all we want to do is we don't want to leave them floating. By default, they're floating, which means that the 74LS93 is always in reset mode. So we want to connect either one of these pins to the ground line. Doesn't matter which one. You only need one of them connected to the ground line. Now our counter is activated, and every time the, every time the uh, monostable multi vibrator offers out a pulse on the negative on the falling edge, the 74LS93 will increment. So the output A will toggle on after another one. The output will toggle off after another one. It will toggle on, and so on and so on. So every time it, it receives a pulse, the output state of the counter toggles from off to on, on, off, and so on and so on. Let's do this on the board. First things first, I've taken a piece of uh, a header, and I've or uh, a jumper rather, and I've uh, s taken some insulation off the end. I'm going to connect that to our in pin on the main pin block. That is our transistor trigger. So now every time I touch that, it's going to trigger the the monostable multi vibrator. So now I'm going to take the DLY output from our monostable multi vibrator. I'm going to connect it to our LED pin. So now. Hopefully you can see that LED light up every time I touch it. Now, if I turn the DLY potentiometer, look at it right here left, I can make that pulse with much longer. Touch it again. And off. So, right, turning the potentiometer, sorry, left, will make the pulse with longer. Turning it right will make it shorter. We want to make it much shorter than that. We want to make it to about one-fourth of a second, 250 milliseconds. That should do it. Maybe just a little bit faster. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can connect the DLY output from the LED to our actuator pin, which is connected to our buzzer. We have our buzzer selected on our, on our actuator pin block. There you go. So now I'm going to disconnect from the, the actuator output. I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the DOI output from our monostable multi vibrator to our clock input on the main pin block. That is the input of our 74LS93. I'm also going to take one of our AND pins, AND2. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose AND2 and connect it to one of the ground common ground lines on our uh, on our power supply pin block. And uh, I'm going to get our wire out here so we can see it. Now, what I'll do is I will take the clock or the out a toggle output, as talked about in the video, and I'm going to connect it to our LED. And I'm going to touch the wire. Toggles on. Again, off. On. Off. Now I'm going to take the LED, the uh, out a toggle output from the 74LS93 from the LED to the actuator input which is right near the bottom here, which is set up for our buzzer, so... So now we've, uh, we can latch our buzzer on. We can latch our buzzer off. So what if we switch the, uh, the actuator pin block from our buzz pins and short our relay pins? Do you hear those clicks? Relay on. Relay off. So now what I can do is I can connect a C to our relay. On our three pin terminal block, if you've watched our other projects and the right tutorial, tutorial number nine actually, listed below, <coughs> you'll know that we can connect A C to our terminal block. We're going to connect we're going to take an extension cord, cut one of the wires, place one end of the cut wire in the C O pin, the common pin, and the other wire in the normally open pin and we're going to use a screwdriver to tighten down those terminals. So basically when the relay is activated it reconnects those wires internally in the relay and when the relay is off it will disconnect them again. So we can apply power to a lamp. So let's give that a try. 
As you can see, I have taped my touch sensor to the ground, just the wire with the uninsulated wire to the ground. I have connected my power supply, my DC power supply, to my board. The circuitry remains the same, but what I've done is I've taken my extension cord, cut one of the wires, placed one side in the common pin, and the other side in the normally open pin, so when the relay is activated, it will apply power to my lamp. My lamp is actually right beside me, so I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on. Now I'm going to bend down and I'm going to touch the touch sensor. Controlling AC devices with a, with the touch of your hand, just using a 555 timer. Well, in this case, since we're toggling, we're also using a counter, but you can use a flip-flop, a single flip-flop, such as these 74LS109A. So there you go. Another fun project using a relay. So we've really done a whole bunch in this, in this uh, lesson, and we've got a lot more coming. Uh, the next lesson is going to be very simple. I'm going to use a read switch to turn on a relay. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your time. I hope you check us out at engineeringshot.com, electroniclessons.com, and paintballprops.com.